Hi guys, so today I'm going to be talking about a movie that I think a lot more people should be talking about because it's wonderful, <laughs> The Great Mouse Detective. I loved this movie. It is so good. The characters are surprisingly memorable, though some of their names were kind of forgettable, but them as characters are great. I loved them. Um, the songs, some of them are kind of forgettable, but I... There were some songs that were like, oh yeah, this is good. And I was not expecting that. I really liked it a lot. A lot more than I was expecting, actually. Um, I don't remember ever seeing this movie before. And I was surprised by that when I was watching it. I was like, why haven't I not seen this movie, I don't think. And I was like... Oh my goodness, this is great. I love it. I'm definitely watching it again. Um, yeah. I absolutely enjoy it. I think more people should be talking about this movie. It is not my favorite, by far not my favorite. But compared to The Black Cauldron, it's beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And even com not compared to The Black Cauldron, just compared to like just movies in general it is absolutely beautiful and wonderful and i love it so good disney you did great with this one um yeah <laughs> i really liked it a lot um yeah i really enjoy it the animation is beautiful beautiful animation um they did use cgi a little bit for this movie which i think the Seeing that they used a lot of CGI, it's so good, and it looks great. I like it. Hello, Rue. Bah! Yep, Rue is a... Bah! Okay, yeah. Um, I really enjoy it. I actually thought it was very good. Um, yeah. Uh, same goes for Oliver and Company, but that's the next episode. Um, yeah. Bah! Okay. I really, really liked it. I thought that it was wonderful. Um, the characters, too, are great. Radigan as a character and as a villain is wonderful. By far not my favorite villain, but it goes to Ursula. Yes, I cannot wait for The Little Mermaid. I'm so happy that it's coming soon. Yes. Um, yeah, I really, really enjoyed it a lot. Um, yeah. Basil was great. Absolutely beautiful animation from this movie. I already talked about the animation, but the animation is beautiful. I love the animation. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Beautiful animation. Um, yeah. Story-wise, great. It's a great story. The bat is like, yes. Oh, yes. I love the bat. Uh, it's it is I it's just a great story, great animation, great songs, kind of forgettable songs, great characters. Like basically all the texts are ticked off saying, Oh, this is good. <laughs> I really was not expecting this. <laughs> I've heard that it's very good from other people, but I don't think I've ever watched it, so I was like, um, why have not why is this not a classic? <laughs> It should. It's so good. I really enjoyed it. I know I'm just saying I really enjoyed it over and over and over again, but you don't understand how much I enjoyed this movie. Um, the scene where, um, where they're like, we're gonna die, and then Radigan has this music being like, you're gonna die. I don't know what the words are. I, I really don't. But it's the it's scene was like, I know they're not gonna die because... I've heard what happens at the end of the story. It's a Disney movie. But I <laughs> like that whole entire scene, like the seriousness of Basil just giving up and then like and then them being like, No, don't give up and the song being like, Give up, it's you're not gonna survive and I just really liked it. I thought it was wonderful. <laughs> Let's get into facts, because there's a lot of facts for this one. Um, so, it was based off a book called Basil of Baker Street. So, yep. Michael Eisner and Jeffrey Katzenberg just recently came into Disney. This was not their first film. As I said, I talked about Katzenberg a little bit in my Black Cauldron episode. Um, how he snipped the animation saying, no, this is not okay for children. <laughs> 
good idea, Katzenberg. Um, yeah, I... Their Disney, being in charge of Disney was an interesting time and I could just make a whole entire video about it because I find that it really, really, really interesting how Roy and Eisner and Katzenberg were like rivals. Rivals is the wrong way for saying it, but they were basically like Lion King is what the Disney what Disney is going through right now. And I just find that super interesting of how two people want the same thing and they want to be the top dog and some of them don't think they're getting the recognition that they accept, that they think they need. And I find that super interesting. Watch Waking Sleeping Beauty, it's a whole thing about that. I think I've been to say Watch Waking Sleeping Beauty a little bit too much in my Disney episodes, but oh my goodness, it is so good, watch it absolutely wonderful documentary. It's probably about an hour and a half and the whole entire time you're glued to the screen because information is going through your mind and you're like, oh yeah, this happened, this happens. And you, you try to remember it all. I've now watched it twice and it's absolutely wonderful. I really love it. Yeah. <laughs> Let's get to the second one. Um, it was needed to be finished in 12 months, which, if you do not know, um, Katzenberg said that he wanted a Disney animated movie to be made every single year, which was a lot. It was a bunch. I, we have kind of been, like, going through all of them fast, but the, the, towards the end of the 80s and the 90s is gonna take a while, cause there's a lot of movies. Um, yeah. And it was really hard on the animators and really hard on Disney as a company to try to crank those out and try to make them as good as the last one. And even better, in my opinion, some of them are like, oh my goodness, this is even better and this one is even better, which I really find that super challenging. Like, if I was in their situation, I don't know what I would do. And I think that Disney just kept going is really, really good as a company and showing what they can do. And as pe the people that work for that company care about that company so much that they're willing to put other things aside just to help that company. Which I think that that's sad, but I also think that really shows how much people care about what these movies are being shown to the audience and how much they enjoy them, which I think is really important. Um, yeah. It was needed to be, uh, because it was needed to be, um, finished in 12 months, they had four directors for this film. Um, John Musker and Ron Clements directing debut was with this film and they have so many absolutely wonderful beautiful films and this is definitely one of them. The Little Mermaid, Hercules, I love both of those movies. I don't think Hercules gets as much credit as it should. Yes, the Greek mythology is really really off but I actually really enjoy it and I like Greek mythology. Like Percy Jackson is great. I could have like a whole entire series of Percy Jackson. I'm reading House of Hades and it's so good. <laughs> but that's another thing. Um, yeah. Um, Bernie Matson co-directed the film and David Eichner also co-directed. Um, because Black Cauldron did so badly, it's not a good movie. And I just put that, I made that, so go check that out. It's really good. Um. I think it's good. I had it. I had lots of fun making it because I got to rant. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, they needed to prove that they could still do animation. They had to prove that they could still do animation, and then they could be good because the yeah because. Black Cauldron was so, so bad. It lost to the Care Bears. And the Care Bears had been out for several, several, several weeks. And its first week, it lost to the Care Bears. That's how bad this movie did. So they were like, what are we going to do? We need to make a really good movie. And we need to make it go out fast so that people are like, oh yeah, Disney doesn't make crap like the Black Cauldron. They make good stuff. Like, um... 
I don't know what name I should call it because probably right now it would be called a different na name, but as the movie that we know it, The Great Mouse Detective. <sighs> this is what I'm getting at is as it was called probably something different when they were thinking of the film. It actually, I know it was because it says it here. <laughs> Peter Sch um, one of the Peter Schneider, Peter Schneider, Schneider. <laughs> I had trouble saying his name. Peter Schneider said that they shouldn't call it Basil of Baker Street like the book was called and call it The Great Mouse Detective as we know it today. The animators were angry. <laughs> One animator in particular went really mad. He Not mad, and I, I actually find it really funny, but Peter did not. Um... This animator, they still don't know who it was because the animators covered it up, but they sent out an email in Peter's name saying, like, we're going to change all of these different animated movie classics <laughs> to things like Seven Little Men Helping a Little Girl. Seven Little Men Helping a Girl. Of course, Snow White. The Girl with the See Through Shoes. Of course, Cinderella. And Peter, I guess, got really angry and wanted to fire whoever did this. And, like I said, the animators and everyone at Disney covered it up and he never found out who it was. Um, this isn't... Vincent Price voiced Radigan, which I already talked about. His character is absolutely wonderful, and yes, definitely not the best one, but I think he should be getting more things, like, the more of a spotlight than he is getting. Because, yeah, I, I really just like him a lot. I actually have some pants with Disney characters on, Disney villains here they are here. Um, I just got them out of my drawer. Uh, I got them at the Disney store and they I love them. But I really wish that he was on them now. They're great. I love them. So like I wish that he had more merchandise and things like that like I was showing with those things. Um, yeah, I actually really, really enjoy him as a character. Um, Alan Young voiced Flavor Shown. Flavor Shown. This is one of the names that I forgot, <laughs> so I really hope I'm saying it correctly. Because the place that I got the information from, they didn't even know how to say his name, so I was like, okay. Um, depending on, they said depending on who it was, so yeah. They say it differently. <laughs> um, yeah, Fidget was voiced by Candy Cadido, Cadito, and, um, He's great. I love him as a character. Absolutely great character. <laughs> He's just such a wonderful character. It's one of those sidekicks that I actually really like. I like sidekicks. I actually really enjoy them. Either as comedic or as villainous sidekicks. I They're normally my favorite character. Yeah. <laughs> like, I used to have Olaf be my favorite character in Frozen. Now it's Elsa. The beautiful Elsa up there. Um, yeah, I just, I like her better, but as a kid, it was Olaf, and I still love Olaf, and Anna was also my favorite. I just love little characters, they're so great, but Frozen is later, and I'm so excited, because we're kind of far away, but, uh, we're early, we're closer than what we were, we're about, we're around halfway through all the movies, which is so weird. <laughs> Um, yeah, Dawson was voiced by Val, Ben, Val, Benton, Benton, and Dawson is based off a nine, um, no, one of the nine old men, uh, Eric Larson, and he, m many of his students that he taught, um, animated this film, and as a way to say thank you for being a great teacher, he was based off of, um, that was who was based off of Dawson, and I think that's really, really cool. Um, I would feel very honored if one of my students, I'm not a teacher, um, not at all, but if I was a teacher and one of my students was like, hey, I'm gonna put you in a movie, I'd be like, oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yeah, so... 
Um, Let Me Be Good to You was going to be sung by Madonna, but it was performed by Melissa Manchester. Um, it was also going to be cut because um, it was too risque, but then people were like, it's a mouse. No one's going to find a mouse risque unless, uh, like, n no one's going to find that risque. It's a mouse. So they were like, okay, you can have it. The animators got really angry in this movie for some reason. And in my opinion, they're normally the ones that get the angriest in these Disney adventure things that I've found out. Like, it's not the story people, it's the animators. They get really angry. I didn't notice that until this episode, because they are getting angry like three times. <laughs> um, this movie was combined with 2D and computer animation, which I have talked about before, but this was the first time it was like really big. Most of the clock tower scene is um, like, backgrounds is, to, is, um, CGI, and CGI is computer animation, and 2D characters, which I absolutely love! I, I love the combination of the two. It's absolutely beautiful, and I think it makes it have, like, a little bit of a more crisp feeling to it, which I'm definitely okay with. Uh, uh, yeah, I love the two together. It's great. Um, I love computer animation just to, as a whole, but I definitely miss the 2D animated films, and I hope they do more things like Princess and the Frog, because they've not done a while, and in a while, it makes me sad, very sad, crying, boo, crying, boo, because as she's sad about animated movies. Okay, boo doesn't have a life. <laughs> It saved the studio because this one made more money <laughs> than what they put out. Unlike the Black Cauldron. Mm -hmm. The Black Cauldron cost a lot to make and they did not make it, of course, because the Care Bears did better than them on their first week, which had been out for several weeks. Yeah, it is, it's not good. <laughs> the Black Cauldron did not do well. But this movie did great. It, it got more money than what the budget was, and I think it 100% deserves all of the love it has, um, and how much money it got, because it's a great movie. I think more people should be talking about it. I think that this movie should be put in Disney rides and things like that. Um, I think Disney should really, really, really um, like, do better at that and put different Disney movies into the parks because, yeah, um, like, Emperor's New Groove is nowhere to be found, and it's absolutely wonderful. Part of it was made, it was made in the 2000s, and the 2000s was not a good time. Home on the Range and Chicken Little. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. <laughs> it... Yeah, it was made during a bad time, and it didn't get the amount of love that it deserves. But that's quite a while away. But I'm really excited for that movie. I am a little like, too excited. Um, yeah. Uh, like I said, I think that they should be giving more love to this movie in the parks. I actually really enjoy it. Um, yeah. That's all I have to say. This video is really long, so if you are still here... Thank you for hearing, hearing me ramble for now about 19 minutes. I hope you guys are safe from the COVID and yeah, wear a mask. Yep. <laughs> it's great. It's great that you guys are enjoying these videos, I think. Uh, Rue should be getting some videos out too. Uh, and then, of course, we do videos together all the time. So yeah, I hope you guys are having a wonderful day, and stay safe. Bye! And don't forget to... I don't know, I just tried to watch Disney movies. I'll say that. Bye! <laughs> watch some Disney movies, they're great.